special presented by IBEW Local 98 Live from Ocean Casino Resort Top Golf. Rob Ellis, Derek Gunn, Mark Farzetta, and Seth Joyner. And we are joined now, and you can hear him each and every Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. right here on Jacob Sports YouTube channel, the one and only John McMullen. So, John, uh, let's start with this. Um, was this an, just a, yet another case of how we reading the room perfectly as this thing edged closer. He did make the little move to get up in front of the Bears to to assure that the Eagles got Jalen Carter. But how did you see this thing unfolding and the Eagles got the guy who, by a lot of a lot of folks' uh, standards here, they wanted the most? Yeah, definitely this is a player. It became pretty clear in the last 48 hours that the Eagles were going to try to move up for, you know, what I was told was a, a pass rusher. So it basically came back. Jalen Carter, Will Anderson, it was always going to be really, really difficult to get up high enough to get Will Anderson. But, you know, in hindsight, when you say he moved up, uh, very obviously only one spot, giving up a, a fourth-round pick next year. Uh, they were trying to get up to five. They were trying to get up to eight. So, you know, there was a concern um, that other teams were trying to move, move up as well to get Jalen Carter. Uh, and the Eagles were able to get it. So, you know, there was more, there was even more of a sense of urgency uh, to get up and get this player. And now it's going to become, look, are, are, are they right? Are they right to take a chance? Because there were a couple team, teams, um, Atlanta is one, uh, that took them off the board. Um, and, and, and for, you know, reasons that, uh, are a little bit troubling to, to tell you the truth, but the Eagles believe they have the infrastructure to to um, get this kid on, on the right path. And obviously he's talented from a talent perspective. Remember, early in this process, before the off the field stuff started and, and some things started to bubble up, up, this was you know projected to be the number one pick in the draft. So from a talent standpoint, I've, I've pretty much said it for months. This is this is one of the easiest Eagles decisions ever from a talent perspective because they believe in the position. Uh, they believe in the importance of the position. That's how talented he is. Um, the only question now is, will he reach that talent level? You know, we always hear Nick Sirianni talk about loving ball and things like that uh, and those intangibles. Um, we'll see. I mean, this team... This franchise is a little haughty at times, and, and some of it is deserving, and we'll see if it works out with Jalen Carter. All right, but let me let me, let me me just follow up, uh, John. So, so a couple things for people who may not know the full story. So he, he was you know, involved in a very serious car accident. Uh, he, he was not in the car, but he was uh, you know, drag racing with, with other folks who ended up you know, dying in, in a car accident. Now, th those people were – you know, allegedly under the influence, et cetera. We know that much. We know it is, um, you know, at the combine, he wasn't in the best shape in the world. And there, there are, there are others things. I don't know if there's things that you can expand on, but what, what were some, can you talk about some of the concerns or is that stuff? Well, right well, it, at his pro day is, yeah. is really where, where he showed up about 10, 15 pounds overweight. And that was very close to the combine as well. So, there was a little – he couldn't finish some of his drills. There were people at Georgia uh, – this is the troubling part – people in the program who told the Atlanta Falcons, who were obviously very close, take them off the board, don't take – that is the most concerning part to me. Okay. And I heard that today and I said, wow. Um, you know, because that – you think about it. Uh, you know, that's your own college program saying that to an NFL team, and I was told the Eagles know this because uh, they were honest. It wasn't like uh, Georgia was picking out. Uh, they were honest ab uh, about their players, and there was come some concerns about the maturity and things of that nature. Now, the Eagles believe they have the infrastructure to deal with it. Uh, it starts with Fletcher Cox. It starts with Brandon Graham. It starts with veteran players like that, as well as Tracy Rocker. He's going to be his position coach. It also starts with Jordan Davis. He was very close with Jordan Davis. Considers even as young as Jordan Davis is, he considered him a, a bit of a, a mentor when they were together at Georgia. Nicobe Dean as well. Um, 
So the, the Eagles are probably a little bit more uniquely able to deal with it uh, in a positive fashion than maybe some other organizations. And we'll see if it works out. You know, John, it's, it's interesting how in, it, we're not that far removed from when we were screaming and why this Eagles organization continuously neglected picking players from the SEC, which is like the AAA for the NFL. Now three consecutive years, they dip into the SEC pool. And obviously it, it took Howard a little while to learn his lesson. But, man, over the last few drafts, including this one, it appears he's learned his lesson well. Yeah, I I mean, look, I mean, Georgia's been so good uh, over the past two seasons, back-to-back national championships. I, I, I mean, you know, I think if you start looking later in the draft, you might see some more uh, Georgia players. So, uh, yeah, uh, you're right about the SEC, and, and, and there's some uh, a dominant talent. Now, you also can't scout the helmet. We all know that as well. You have to be realistic, and there's some good players from – small schools and things like that. But uh, the Eagles have sort of gone down this route. And if you think about uh, Devontae Smith and Landon Dickerson from Alabama, uh, Jordan Davis, N'Kobe Dean sort of, you know, and N'Kobe's uh, from his standpoint, almost getting a red shirt year. The Eagles look at uh, those two and Cam Jurgens as sort of uh, an extension of this year's draft because they're going to be expected to start this year. Uh and now you have Jalen Carter, and we'll see what unfolds from here. But uh, this kid is, you know, again, from a talent standpoint, if you think about last year, uh, Trevon Walker was the number one overall pick to Jacksonville from Georgia. You know, he's considered a better prospect than him. He's considered a better prospect than Jordan Davis, and we know what kind of prospect he was last year. Uh, when he's right, and he's playing at a high level. Um, this is a very, very dangerous player. And if you go back to Howie Roseman's uh, pre-draft press conference, he kind of alluded to, look, we don't expect to be in the top 10 by merit for the next number of years because of Jalen Hurts and, and where the team is. Um, and they need to take advantage of this situation. And they were trying to get up. I'm trying to get up, as I said, to five to eight. They finally got up to nine. Uh, they wanted to make sure that they this player. Is it as simple, John, as he replaces Javon Hargrave? He comes in there, similar production, maybe better production. What is a realistic expectation for Jay Carter now that he is a member of the Philadelphia Eagles? Well, I, I, I you saw it last year with Jordan. Uh, uh, Davis, George is so talented. I, I, I'm not sure anybody on that front is prepared to, to go in and, and play major snaps right away. You know, it's more of a rotational system down there. Uh, obviously, he had conditioning problems. So that's probably going to be a work in progress. I always go back to Jim Schwartz, and, you know, he, he always called them startup cost with young players. And it doesn't matter. If it's a, a, a rookie first round pick, a seventh round pick, undrafted free agent, everybody's going to go through some startup cost. So I'm not going to say he's going to be Javon Hargrave and be able to replace the year that Javon had last year right away. But long term ceiling, he's got a higher ceiling than Javon Hargrave. So, you know, develop, player development is real, uh, but it's going to take some time. Uh, uh, but when you look at this Eagles defensive line as a whole and understand they still have Fletcher Cox and Brandon Graham and some of the veteran players, that's what they want. They want this rotational system. They want to come at you in waves. And this is going to be uh, a big part of that rotation from day one. That's the goal. John, I, I get the sense that, you know, Jalen Carter is probably the one of the most talented defensive tackles um, to be drafted in quite some time because he gives you everything. Yeah, he's violent in the pass game. He's violent in the pass rush. Um, you know, I get the concerns. You know, it kind of rubs me the wrong way sometimes, you know, when you hear all these reports that come out, you know, about these kids because you're affecting their money, you know, when you say things that you're saying. And that goes – 
you know, listen, I, I get what happened off the field. Um, but I've heard people in the media over the years say, say things about guys that's been un, unsubstantiated. Um, there's no way that you can tell me that Jalen Carter played for three or four years at Georgia and everybody there liked him. So, of course, somebody's going to say, oh, you know, stay away from the kid. But I've also heard that he's a good kid, you know, that at 19, 20 years old, we all made dumb mistakes. We've all done things, you know, uh, it, by God's grace, you know, it didn't wind up in a situation like he found himself in. Um, maybe he's got some unsavory friends and, and maybe the mentorship of not having Jordan Davis and, and the Kobe Dean there to steer him in the right direction this year kind of precipitated some of these things that happened. Um, I just want the kid, every, everybody to just give the kid a chance and, and, and look at where he is and let's deal with what we're dealing with right now. I think he's a phenomenal talent. You know, he's one of the few guys that I've seen since Jerome Brown. And I know that I'm mentioning that name in high esteem, but the kid plays every of the game. Jordan Davis is a run stopper. He's not a pass rusher. There's not very Siobhan Hargrave was a run, was a pass, pass rush. He was not a run stopper. Okay. This kid gives you the full boat. He gives you everything. And as rotational as they want to be, I think that he plays a much more major part in this defense than anyone's thinking at this moment in time. If they can get him in in, in shape. Yeah, I think the conditioning part is the biggest part early in his career, but that, that happens with a lot of players. As you know, you get uh, guys in uh, NFL strength and conditioning programs, and you, you, you see these uh, big leaps and bounds over the first couple seasons. Uh, and I think you'll you'll see the same with Jalen Carter. Look, from a talent standpoint, I'm with you, Seth. There's no question. <laughs> I mean, the fact that uh, – Again, this is, this guy was not in the conversation. I mean, he was projected to be the number one overall pick right. uh, way back when Chicago had the top pick and wasn't looking for a quarterback because they had Justin Fields. Um, and and before uh, some of the off the field stuff started, um, you know, but he did fall to number nine with that talent, which isn't that far, by the way. You know, other players in the same uh, a predicament who uh, don't have that talent would have fell far more dramatically. So that's, you know, the talent versus tolerance issue uh, that we all know exists in the NFL. This is a tremendous, tremendous talent. So there's going to be more tolerance. And the Eagles are one of those teams who has said they feel they have the infrastructure to deal with these types of issues. Um, you know, Jeffrey Glory has a history of giving people second chances. He doesn't have a problem with that. Um, and he, he, you know, Dom DeSandro does his job and he's on the board and they took the, the player that they felt could be most impactful. From a football standpoint, I think that was the right decision. And if this doesn't work, it, it's not going to be because of a lack of talent or anything of that nature. Right. And, and when you have players at this level, go all the way back to Ryan Leaf, who's a player, you know, a lot of people are familiar with. And, and they call him bust now because he looks at bust. But it wasn't like everybody got it wrong from his talent perspective. Uh, he was extraordinarily talented, uh, but he had a lot of off the field issues and things went wrong. And usually when you have top five picks or top ten picks, and they fail, it's not because of the talent. It's because of other things. Uh, and, you know, I think it's fair to point out that these things have happened in the past. I think it's fair to point out that certain teams, uh, Atlanta being one of them, um, uh, uh, Las Vegas being one of them, um, probably weren't going to consider it in the first round. Not probably, definitely. Thank goodness. Uh, for whatever reason. Uh, and, you know, maybe they made the wrong decision, but they made those decisions. And it's, 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 it's fair to point that out. All right, John, good information, man. We appreciate you hopping on. Give us a couple minutes. We know it's going to be a busy night for you and a busy day tomorrow, 8 a.m., Birds 365 with yourself and Jody McDon McDonald. John, we appreciate a couple minutes, man. Thank you very much for your time. 
All right, right. thanks, guys. You got it. Thank you. Coming up, we have Pat Glauser, who is the director of the Gallery Sportsbook right here at Ocean Casino Resort. Are the Eagles now the favorites to win the Super Bowl? We'll see where they fall now that they've gotten Jalen Carter. You are watching the Jacob Draft Special presented by IBEW Local 98 from Ocean Casino Resort Top Golf.